Um, welcome. Thank you so much for coming here. Uh, so my name is Marietta, and I came here from Vancouver, Canada. I will talk more about myself later. For now, I really wanted to introduce you. Who are you? What are you doing here? We're in Puerto Rico, 10 a.m., Sunday morning, and you are here at a tech conference. <laughs> I mean, you could be outside, yet you chose to be here. And I know why you're here. You're on a mission. You want to improve yourself, take on new challenges, level up. You want to learn lots of new things here. And I think that's awesome. You're all really awesome. Thank you for choosing to be here. In the course of completing your mission, you might come across some roadblocks. It's not always going to be smooth sailing for you. There will be bumps. There will be times where you get stuck and you can't continue. When you see that roadblock, what are you going to do about it? What can you do? How much effort you want to put into completing your mission? How badly do you want it to succeed? Based on your answer, and only you can answer it for yourself, there are two options. One option is really, really easy. The other one is kind of more complicated. You know what's really easy? Give up. Move on. Just say, no, I'm done. Not going to do it anymore. Go back to your comfort zone. Do something else. Move on. It's easy to give up. It's also easy to come up with excuses to justify giving up. You could tell yourself that, I tried. I gave it my best shot. Just didn't work out. Or you think that, no, maybe it's not for me. Maybe I'm not supposed to do this. I'm supposed to do something else. So you move on. Or you think it's just not worth trying. You have other priorities. You want to do something else. So you give up. The thing about excuses, sometimes they're invalid. They're errors. When you make excuses, you could be making a mistake. So don't make excuses. Don't give up. Then what's the other option? Well, you got to reach out, find someone who can help you and guide you. And it's going to take a lot of effort finding help. What if you're new to this? New to the community, new to programming, new to Python, you don't know who you can reach out to. So you're going to have to scout out potential mentors and somehow convince them to help you. And what if they say no? You're going to do it again and find a different mentor. And it's just as easy it is to come up with excuses to give up. You might also come up with excuses for not asking for help. You might think that my question is really stupid. It's really newbie, beginner questions. I think everybody else knows the answer. They can find out except me. Like, do I really want to let the whole world know that I'm stuck? They're going to realize that I'm, to not, I'm not that good. Um, I think it's a stupid question. It's, it's not worth asking. I'm just going to keep it to myself. Except there is no stupid question. All your questions are valid that other people have asked before. And there will be others will be asking the same question. It's worth asking. It's worth finding help. But 
withdrawals, men's planners exist in our community. They're toxic when you encounter them, when you get mocked, gotta disengage, leave, find a different community. It's hard. The truth is, finding mentors is hard. Good mentors are rare. They don't walk around wearing name tags that says mentor. They don't call themselves mentor. They just do it. How do you reach out to them if you don't even know who they are? So, in order to be connected to a mentor, you first need to figure out where they belong to, what communities they're in. Join that community and get connected to them. It's going to take several tries before you find the right community and the right mentor for you. It's hard. <laughs> and finding the right mentor is not the only challenge. Maybe you think that you're just too new, you don't know enough, you can't be helped yet. Even though somebody tries to explain things to you, maybe you're, you're not gonna get it just because you don't know anything. <laughs> so why bother? Maybe you think that you need to do a little bit more learning on your own first and be a little less newbie, put yourself into more intermediate level, and then you're gonna start asking questions. That's not right. Each time I do this, I always do this, I wish that somebody had told me this sooner. I wish I didn't have to learn all of this on my own. I really wish I knew stuff sooner. So don't delay. Reach out, get help. I thought it was hard as a newbie to ask help, but at least it's kind of an excuse. Like at least I'm new, I need help. It was harder to ask for help when I consider myself as sort of an expert. Like I've been programming for many years. I'm supposed to know the things. I shouldn't need help, yet it still happens. I am still often get stuck and need to ask questions. The truth is, no one's really perfect. Everybody know a little bit of something. Nobody really knows everything. Once in a while, there will be times when you need help and others need help from you. This is what the community is all about. It's about helping each other. It's okay for you to be an expert in one domain and still need help with another domain. Reach out when you need to, don't delay. Um, sometimes I think that asking for help is, is a burden. Like I, my mentor need to spend time answering my questions. I think it, it's a waste of time. They're, they're busy. They have other priorities. They have family. I really don't want to be a burden. I'm just going to be wasting their time. But you're not wasting their time. Mentoring you is a valuable and rewarding experience to your mentor. They learn from you. You'll be exposing them to new set of problems that they, not, they don't normally face. It's not a waste of time for them. The truth is, mentors, they face challenges themselves. They have their own problems, they have uncertainties too. When you come to them with a problem, in a domain of their expertise, something they actually know how to solve, it can feel great. It's nice to help, being able to help. It's not a waste of their time. Reach out. I used to think that I don't deserve anybody's help. Like, I haven't done anything important or useful why would anybody want to help me? I'm not worthy. You're worthy of help. Imposter syndrome 
is real. This is one of the ways it can manifest in you, making you think that you're not worthy, you don't belong here. That's imposter syndrome. Acknowledge it. Get help. Talk to someone about it. There are lots of resources out there to help you with this. One thing I always felt each time I want to ask help is I felt like a failure because I couldn't do it on my own. Except asking for help is not a failure. It's not the end. When you reach out, you will be one step closer to reaching your goal. It's not the end. It's the beginning of a new success story. Your success story, your mentor's success story. They will share your success with you. It's not a failure. These myths will stand in the way of your success. They will delay and prevent you from reaching out. You gotta get over this. Don't believe in them. Find a mentor. But well, um, I know what this talk title is about, dial M for mentor, but unfortunately you can't literally dial M for mentor on your phone. <laughs> but I have some ideas of where you can find mentors. Hi ladies, it's a global mentorship network helping women to become active members of Python community. And um, there are chapters all over the world. It looks like there is none in the Caribbean. I would hope somebody start one. And if you want to get help of how to start a PyLadies chapter, pip install PyLadies. Backward compatible with Python 2. <laughs> it works. <laughs> you will get a starter kit. So also, don't be a stranger. Be part of the community. Go out to meetups. Meet people in your Python user groups. They can be your mentors. Maybe you don't need help right away, but maybe you have the expertise. Somebody else might need your help. Come to meetups. Be available for others to reach out to you. You know who else could be good mentors? Open source project maintainers. They are not tech support people. They are not service providers writing features for you for free. They are potential mentors who can teach you into contributing to their project. If you have problems using their libraries, maintainers are the one who you can reach out to. Luckily for us in this community, there is no shortage. There are a few open source maintainers in this conference right now. I hope you say hi to them. You might need their help. And if you're interested to contribute to Python, core Python standard libraries, there is a mentorship program. Go to pythonmentors.com. There is a private mailing list, core mentorship. They, the core developers are there to help you if you have specific questions on how to contribute to CPython. So now what? You, you know you need help. You found a mentor. Are you done? Are you successful now? No. There's still lots, lots of work to do. You see, good mentorship takes time to build. It's teamwork requires commitment from both you and your mentor. Give them the respect they deserve. Don't talk back. Don't argue. If you disagree with their opinion, just say thanks. Find a different mentor. There is no need to criticize in public. No need for that. Realize that your mentors have other personal life. 
mentoring you. It's a voluntary thing that they do on the side. They have other commitments. They're really successful in their job. They have families. Don't feel too entitled. You can always expect immediate answers. You can always get immediate. You can be successful immediately. It's going to take work. This whole thing is your own story. You are trying to accomplish your own mission. Your mentors are there just to support you. They'll help steer you into the right direction, but they're just a passenger. You're the driver all along. It's still your responsibility to follow through to accomplish your success. You're in complete control. You decide how fast or how slow you want it to reach your destination. With your mentor behind you, you will be successful. You will complete your mission. Don't forget to take credit for your own work. You do owe your mentor something. Thank them for their guidance. Now, all the mentors I've worked with has never asked for anything in return. They're just happy to help. But I know what they really want out of helping you. They want you to pay it forward and mentor others. So, been talking here for half an hour and I haven't really introduced myself. So, here's a little bit more about me. Um, my name is Marietta and I came from Vancouver. I co organized the Vancouver Pi Ladies. I also work there as a software engineer. I'm kind of a um, newbie to open source. I started contributing to Python less than half a year ago. I contribute to CPython, to the python.org, and also to the dev guide. So I have a little confession about it. <laughs> Even though I started contributing last year, my first attempt of contributing was the year before. So two years ago, I became interested in contributing to open source. Spent 30 minutes reading the dev guide on how to compile Python. Got an error, and I didn't know what to do about the error. So I gave up. I thought if I couldn't even figure out this error, maybe i not meant to be contributing to Python. It took me a whole year to try again, to admit my mistake. I knew I needed help in order to do this. But first, I needed to overcome those myths that were holding me back. So eventually, I reached out to the community. I found mentors. First, I got connected to PyLadies. I discovered the core mentorship program. I reached out to Guido, the creator of Python. And eventually, I got connected to another core developer, Raymond Hettinger, who offered to mentor me as well. It is with their help that I'm able to do this, contributing to Python. And I think some of you know that Python has existed for more than 20 years. In all of those years, there has never been a female core developer. There has never been a woman who has the commit privilege to Python until three weeks ago. Three weeks ago, on the recommendation of Raymond Hattinger, Python granted a commit privilege to a woman for the first time ever. So, um, I kind of want to introduce myself one last time. <laughs> Hi, my name is Marietta. As of uh, three weeks ago, I'm a new Python core developer. It's a 
real honor to be here at Pi Caribbean. Thank you.